Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. In this video, we're going to create a weather app. As you can see, this weather app is comprised of multiple different sections, starting from this input where you can type down the city where you're looking for, and then this middle widget, along with the weather forecast, through which we will have access to the next 10 days weather forecast. Let's just give it a shot. I'm going to type down the city of Paris here, click on the search, and here we go. So the middle widget here shows that the weather condition is sunny in Paris. It shows the temperature and it goes all the way down to the date. Other than that, there is this cool weather forecast for the upcoming 10 days. There is also this cool feature here. We can easily toggle between imperial units and metric units. As you can see, Fahrenheit can easily turn into Celsius and this change applies to all the other wildcard here, so they are very well connected. Now, let's focus on the architecture. As you can see, there is this search input on the UI where users can type the city they are looking for. And then, by clicking on the search button, an API call, a GET request to be more specific, is made to the API slash weather API on our backend service. On the back end, we make actually a request to weatherapi.com and then the response is visualized on the UI. On the middle widget, as you remember, the weather condition for the city you're looking for will be visualized and then you can see the forecast widget and all the information regarding the upcoming 10 days. The technologies used in this weather app is quite simple. We only use Next.js. So one of the cool features of Next.js is that it can allow you to uh, use your own custom server so you don't have to rely on Node.js or any other uh, technology. For this project I have decided to use weatherapi.com API which can provide you with lots of great services and all you have to do is to go to the website, sign up for its service and Upon signing up, you will receive an API uh, secret code. So since I have already signed up for this service, I have access to it. So I'm going to go ahead and use that one for my API testing. This is the URL that we're going to make the GET request to. It includes three query strings, key referring to the API key that we just received from the previous step, Q indicating the city that we're looking for its weather condition and days referring to the number of days that we want to have access to. Okay, so I'm using Postman here. I have typed down the URL. I'm going to add the question mark here and add all the data regarding those three query strings. So this is the key and this is my API key that I received from weatherapi.com. Q referring to a hypothetical city. I have chosen Toronto, Canada. And days referring to the upcoming 10 days. So I have added number 10 because I want to have access to the next 10 days weather forecast. I'm going to go ahead and click on send. So as you can see, this is a GET request. Let's see what it brings. Here we go. The result includes three keys here, location, current, and forecast. Let's just start focusing on the location first. The location indicates the value that we entered on the queue section here. So the second query screen, the second query string referred to the city that we're looking for its weather condition. So I just typed down Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And then we have the second key here, current referring to the current weather condition. So as you can see, we have access to the temperature in Celsius, temperature in Fahrenheit, and lots of other great information regarding our weather app, like wind speed in mile per hour and wind speed in kilometer per hour. So you can definitely go ahead and see what information is useful for your, uh, for your application. And then here is the third key forecast. Within that forecast key, there is another key embedded there, forecast day, which is an array. So this array indicates the number of days and all the weather information regarding those days. 
reference stands, today is April 6th. So the first value represents anything regarding the uh, April 6th weather condition. So I'm going to close it down. As you can see, the second value is April 7th. And this list goes all the way down to the last uh, day here. We're going to have access to the next 10 days. So the last value would be the 10th day in a row. I'm going to go ahead and create a Next.js application. So let's use MPX according to the uh, Next.js document. So create Next app. And I'm going to name it Weather. Okay, it's asking whether we like to install TypeScript or not. I'm going to select no. Would you like to use ESLint as well? I'm going to go ahead with no. Would you like to use Tailwind CSS with this project? Uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to use it, but I'm going to show you guys how to install it directly uh, from the, its document and using those codes. So at the moment, I'm going to select no. Uh, would you like to use src directory so i'm gonna use no just going to use something quite straightforward and simple to explain would you like to use experimental app directory no what import alias would you like to configure it so as you can see there is a default value there i'm gonna type it down and go ahead so at slash star so it's going to install some dependencies Okay, all the dependencies are installed. I'm gonna type ls to see what's inside our directory. So there's this weather app here. I'm gonna cd into that weather folder. Okay, we are in the correct directory. I'm gonna go ahead and run the application. npm run dev. Okay, it's on. 3000. I'm going to open it. Let's open port 3000. So HTTP localhost 3000. So this is the default page that you see from the Next.js application. Definitely we're going to modify it and change it and trying to finally turn it into that weather application. So let's open weather application here. I'm going to go to the index and get rid of all those unnecessary uh, default values. So let's see what happens here. Okay, I'm going to drag all the way down to the main section. and replace it with a simple h1 tag. Save it. And open the local host here. So yeah, the change has been successfully applied here. There's still some residual CSS code there. We need to get rid of those CSS code in order to have a plain weather app here, a plain screen where we can apply all those changes. I'm going to get rid of these unnecessary imports, all those shaded values and imports. So other than this Google font, everything else is unnecessary. So let's get rid of them. Save it. So still it's shady. Means that it is being affected by the global CSS uh, codes there. So I'm going to open the global CSS from the styles folder. Select all, delete it, and save it. There we go. It's plain white, and then we're going to apply all those changes here.
Let's go ahead and install Tailwind CSS for this Next.js project. I'm on the official document website. You can definitely go ahead and check out all the necessary steps here, but let's focus on this part first. The first step is to create the project, which we have already done. Second step is to install Tailwind CSS. So I'm going to go ahead and click on copy. Let's paste it here in the main directory. As you can see, the second command has been run as well, and two files are generated here, table and config and post CSS config JS. So let's focus on the next step here. So the third step is to configure the template path. We need to add the following code to the tailwind.config.js. So I'm going to go ahead and copy everything here. Open the tailwind config.js, which has been already created as, as a result of the previous step. I'm going to delete everything and paste the code. We got it from the previous step. Save it. Let's get back to the document. Here's step number four. We need to add the tailwind directive to the CSS. So I'm going to copy everything here from the globals.css and add it to the global CSS. You probably remember that we let everything that was already in this uh, global CSS file. So let's paste it and save it. Back to the document. So we need to start the build process. So let's do it as well. Okay, it's ready. We need to test whether it is working or not. So all we need to do is to look at step number six, and we need to add some of the Tailwind CSS classes to a class name to see what it does. So I'm going to copy this H1 tag here and paste it here. Basically, I have replaced the previous uh, home component with the new one. In this new h1 tag, there are a few class names from the Tailwind CSS. For instance, the text is supposed to be three times larger. The font is going to be bold. There is going to be an underline for that h1 tag. So in order for me to show you how it is affecting the way it looks, I'm going to add something more outstanding. For example, the background is supposed to be green and 300 basically defines a certain greenish color out of the green spectrum so I'm gonna save it let's see what it does and here we go the green color is applied there's an underline here and the font is three times larger our final product is supposed to look something like this we're going to type down the name of the city and we'll have access to the weather forecast. And there's this imperial unit conversion into metric unit. We're going to start with a bluish layout that can encompass everything else inside it. So let me just add it here. The class name supposed to be something like this like a background of blue with a color code 50 mx or margin on the x-axis is supposed to be 20 margin top will be 22 let me just add two tags here h1 below and i'm gonna add H3 tag just to see how it affects the whole screen. Welcome to the next JS app. I'm going to save it. 
And look at this. That bluish background is applied here. It's going to be the layout that will encompass everything else inside it. Now let's create an input through which the user can type down the city that he's looking for. So I'm going to get rid of these two, these two H tags and instead add a new div here. Let's add some Tailwind CSS class names here. For instance, it's supposed to be flex items center justify content and the margin of four. Within this div, I'm going to add an input through which the user will type something down. So let's add input here. We're going to add some details and attributes to this input let's start with the class name i will add the details later on let's define a name for it let's call it a search bar id is needed here let's call the id a search bar id Other than ID, I'm going to go ahead and add type. So it's going to be a search type. Let's add the placeholder value as well. Something like your city or zip code. I'm going to save it. And let's see what happens. So we have an input here. Placeholder shows the text, your city or your zip code. I have already copied a series of class names for this input. I'm going to paste it and explain what it implies. So let's just paste it here. So the placeholder is going to be gray with the color code 500. The opacity is defined here with the, with the code 50. Uh, there are some focus attributes here, like when it is on focus, the outline is none, ring two, uh, there is a ring with the, blue with the blue color and color code 600 is defined here. We are going to have uh, border, the border is going to be gray, rounded large, padding is going to be 2, and the margin on the y-axis is going to be 2 as well. I'm going to save it and show you how it affects the input. Here we go. It's become even more visually pleasing, right? So, as I focus on it, there is a blue ring over this input and some padding and some margins have been applied as well. Let's create the search button as well. I'm gonna type down button in the term search. Let's save it. Here we go, we've got a button here. Now let's define the class name for this button and make it look a little bit better. I have already copied some Tailwind CSS code, so let me just paste it here and explain what every single attribute does. Okay, so class name, paste it. Okay sure everything is between the quotation mark so the margin is going to be four we have a background with the color code 500 it's blue so it's a bluish color uh, for the hover we will have a background with a different color it's going to be 600 instead of 500 so there's definitely going to be a visible change 
the text is going to be white so the color is defined the padding y is defined by number two so on the y-axis there will be a padding uh, px or padding on the x-axis is defined as well it's going to be rounded full there's going to be some shadow as well and a transition is defined here too so the duration is uh, 300 milliseconds and the pattern is is in out so I'm gonna save it Let's see what it does look at this it's rounded the color is white uh, when I hover over it the color changes from 500 to 600 color code so it's beautiful every button should eventually have a functionality it got to trigger something right so I'm gonna go ahead and add the on click event here on click and simply define a console log hello world I'm gonna save it and switch back to the main screen I'm going to click on F12 on my PC to have access to the dev tools. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to click on the search button and look at this. This function triggers upon clicking on the button. Later on, I'm going to define a function that will fetch the weather information from the weatherapi.com. So for now, let's just get rid of this on click and save it. We need to center these two items and bring them in the middle of this uh, blue screen. So just have a quick look at this one. We need to apply a correction here. So it's going to be justify center instead of justify content. save it and here we go now it's time to create a yellow div here under the blue div this section will be responsible for visualizing the data that comes from this search button I'm gonna add another div here let's define a class name and add a background of Amber with the color code 50 and a padding 10. Save it. And here it is. There's this amber div below the main div. Now I'm going to add a series of H tags in order to have access to some information such as the city, the wind speed, and all the other necessary data. I have already copied the code, so I'm going to paste them here and explain every single one here so let's just start with an h1 tag uh, i have defined a class name the text is supposed to be x large so your city will be the value for that h1 tag and then i have decided to add a span with the font bold and the margin 2. below that h1 tag i have added a series of h3 tags each uh, containing some information regarding the weather like the weather forecast temperature pressure humidity wind and date at the moment no dynamic data is added to these values so let's see what it does here we go there's this h1 tag your city weather temperature all the way to date later on we're going to fetch the information that is related to the city that you're topping down here and then bring them all on the screen so you will have access to real dynamic data. Now it's a good time to create the API. You're actually going to type down the city or a zip code and then click on the search button and then that API call is being made. So let's move on. I'm going to go under the API folder and add another endpoint I'm going to call it weatherapi.js so let's define it export default it's going to be an asynchronous function we have request and response 
So since we're going to make a GET request, I'm going to use uh, Axios. You can definitely move forward with any other data fetcher. For example, fetch would be a good option, but let's just use this Axios for this project. Import Axios from Axios. Since I have already installed this dependency, I don't need to install it again, but if you haven't done it yet, you can definitely move forward with npm install axios and then enter. I don't need to do it, so just going to run it npm run dev. While I was testing the API on Postman, you probably remember that I was using this URL. So I'm going to make a GET request using this URL, adding three uh, query strings. I'm going to call it weather. It's going to be asynchronous. So I'm going to add the word await, axios, get, and then template strings. Let's copy this URL. Okay, I'm adding the question mark. And now it's time to add those three query strings. The first one was the key, referring to your API key. And the second one was Q, referring to your city. And the last one was days, referring to the number of days that you're looking for. So in our case, we're looking for the next 10 days. So we need to add something here. First of all, I'm going to go ahead with my secret key. In order to test whether this API call is working or not, we need to add three values here. The first one is the API key that we get uh, from the weatherapi.com. The second one is the city. And the last one, which is already hard coded, is a number of days. In this case, it's going to be 10 days. Please feel free to go to weatherapi.com, log in, and you can get access to your weather API key. Let's add the .env file. I'm going to add it and call it .env and define the weather API. I have already copied that weather API access key, so I'm going to paste it. And let's save it. Let's save it and get back to weather API. I'm going to put everything inside a try catch block. So let's define it. Try catch and drag the whole weather axis dot get request here and put it back to the try section. Great. Let's not forget to add the error argument here for the cat section. So I'm going to put it here manually. Let's add the API key along with this city. I'm going to define it as weather API process.env and weather API. I'm actually making a reference to this weather API key, which is already defined under the .env file as an environment variable. I'm going to save it. I'm going to add this weather API inside the very first key. So the next template string, which needs to be filled, is the city. I'm going to define it as something hard-coded. Uh, later on, we're going to make it dynamic. So I'm going to add London as an example. Okay. 
and put the city inside the queue section. So we have access to the weather API and the city here. If you remember from our Postman uh, testings, the weather actually was comprised of multiple different sections. What matters to us is the data section. So I'm going to define data as part of this weather request and return a response. In case of a successful response, we're going to add the response code 200 and the result will be a JSON. I'm going to define a message here as send successfully and whether what matters the most is the value that we get from this data whether that data so I'm ca I'm gonna call it main data and attribute it to the data that we have already defined this one save it define the error code as well and return 500 status code in case of an error and at the JSON message here going to be something like internal server error save it it's time to test this API endpoint I'm gonna to go to postman and paste the exact same URL so that endpoint was API slash weather API so this is a get request aligns with this Axios get request all I'm all I have to do is to make a request and see what happens normally we expect to have uh, access to a successful 200 status code with a JSON comprised of two main keys message and main data let's see what it does okay great so here's the result first of all the status code is 200, indicating that that's a successful request. Let's take a closer look at these two keys, message and main data. Message and main data were already defined on, on our backend. As you can see, the value for the message is sent successfully, and the value for main data is the data, which is the result of a GET request uh, to the weatherapi.com. I'm going to open main data here. As you can see, there are lots of great information that we can later on use on our uh, UI. For instance, the city of London is the location that we're looking for, and the current weather condition is also accessible here. It's partly cloudy, uh, along with lots of other useful information. What we specifically intend to create is a mechanism in which someone types down a city here, that city appears in front of your city section, and all the other relevant information will be spit out on the relevant section. For instance, we need to have access to the general weather condition, temperature, pressure, humidity, wind, and date. Let's switch back to the UI codes. Under the index, I'm going to go ahead and add an unchange event listener to the input so that whenever a user type down something on that input it can be visualized on the screen so let's add the unchange here I'm gonna define a function let's call it change handler This change handler doesn't do anything as long as you don't define it. So I'm going to go ahead and define change handler here. Change handler. It's going to have access to the event. 
is just console something here. Event dot target dot value. Save it. Let's switch back to the local host. I'm going to press F12 on my PC, or you can feel free to click on the inspect and on the console section. Let's type down something. Hello, and here we go. Whenever I type down anything, any letter or any character, it is console on the console section. Previously, we were using a hard-coded value for this city. As you can see, the hard-coded value London is already part of this API request, but this is not what we're intending to create. Basically, the user should type down something here, like LA, London, or any other value, and this should somehow be connected to our backend services. So we're going to make this city value dynamic. In order to make a dynamic value, we need to use set a state. Basically, I'm going to have access to what is typed down on that search button and then define a set of state and then transfer that value to the API call. So let's just write it. I will definitely walk you through every single element step by step. So I'm going to add a user state here and call it input val. And the set of state or set input val will eventually change the value of this user state. Okay, it's automatically imported. And let's just add an initial value. It's going to be an empty string. I'm going to save it. We want this button to make the API call. So once the user is clicking on this button, an API call is sent to our backend. And that API call will include the value that is entered on the input section. So I'm going to go ahead and add an on-click event listener to this button. Here is the button section. I'm going to add on-click. It's going to be a function. I'm going to call it the fetch function. And this fetch function will be in charge of sending a value to our backend. That value is going to be the initial value on this input part. So I'm going to copy the input val and put it here as the arguments of the fetch function. Now we need to define the fetch function. It's going to be an asynchronous function using Axios to make that call. So I'm going to go ahead and call it fetch function. It will have the input val. It's the argument. This is going to be an asynchronous function. So make sure to add the async term here. Okay, let's define a try catch block. We need to handle the error gracefully. I'm going to use Axios to make the get request. Let's use template strings. This city is going to be the query string that's supposed to be dynamic, right? So I'm going to add the city equals the value which comes from the input. So it's going to be input val. Basically, the user typed the city that's going to be considered input val. Input val will be sent to the weather API. Previously, we had this 
static value city of london but here we're gonna replace it with that dynamic value coming from the ui let's deconstruct the value coming from the data so something that matters in this case is the main data and let's just console value and see what it brings main data I'm going to save it and let's focus on the catch error block as well it's going to be a console log message something something around the lines of error occurred while fetching weather data and error message would be the output i'm going to save it this is an asynchronous function so make sure to add the await as well i'm going to save it again i'm going to open the console section Let's enter a city, Paris, and look at this, the data is defined, but the value representing that data is still static. The location refers to London, because that data was static already. Now, instead of using this static value, I'm just going to replace it with const city query city so basically we are taking advantage of the query strings and the only query strings attached to this api call is the input coming from the city section so i'm gonna save it get back here let's delete everything enter the city of paris which is different from london and this time, look at this. In the location section, we have access to France, Paris. So whatever is typed here will be the value attached to the city query string. Let's just give it another shell with another city. I'm going to go with Los Angeles, LA. The new data is here. Let's focus on the location section, and here's the country, U.S., and the city of Los Angeles. The next step is to match the data regarding the following part with the city of Los Angeles. For instance, your city should represent the city that we typed down here. Weather, temperature, pressure, humidity, wind and day should also represent the corresponding information of the city typed down here. So... Let's move forward and bring all them in. I'm going to define another user state. This one represents the current city. City set current city. So the data structure would be an object representing all the necessary information. For instance, we're going to have access to the first one, city, city of Los Angeles in that example should be represented there. It's going to be an empty string. Next one would be general weather condition. Another string. I'm going to add temperature. Pressure. Entity, wind speed, date, 
temperature in Fahrenheit and the speed. going to be in miles. As you can see, the initial value for every single key here is an empty string. Basically, there is nothing to be added here. But eventually, we're going to create something that can be triggered by this set current city. For instance, when the user clicks on this search button, this function, this fetch function triggers, and this object should be updated eventually as well. To do that, I'm going to add the set current city I'm going to use the spread operator to update the object. So I have added three dots here indicating that I am utilizing the spread operator. The current city was the initial value for this set state. Everything was just empty strings. So for every single element, I have added that element here accordingly. City, weather, temperature temperature in Fahrenheit, pressure, humidity, wind, wind in mile, and the date. So you remember that from that fetch, uh, from that axios.get request, we had access to the main data. The main data actually represents an object which is comprised of three main keys, current, forecast, and location. The information regarding this section is somehow found under the location, current, and forecast. So let's find out how each information is represented here. Let's focus on the first data, it's city. As you can see, city can be found under the location and the name. So under the location, there's this name here. Next one would be weather. Weather is under main data, current, condition, and text. So let's take a look at the current and condition. So this is current. I'm looking for condition, and here's the text. So it's cloudy. It's partly cloudy. The next one is temperature. All the other information from temperature to the date can be found under the current. All you have to do is to figure out how to find them and how to address them. Uh, another important thing to note here is that Weather API provides us with two different units, the metric units as well as the imperial units. The temp here represent the Celsius, which is the uh, metric unit. Temperature F or temp underline F represent temperature in Fahrenheit or the imperial unit. Let's comment out this console log. We no longer need main data. And instead, we just want to make sure whether the current city represents the exact same data uh, displayed here. So, value is current city. I'm going to copy it and put a console here. Save it and switch back to the local host. So, city of Toronto search on it and here we go you have access to city date humidity pressure all the way to wind uh, wind mile which is the wind speed in imperial units now let's scroll down and go to the main return section if you scroll down back to this div you know that there are multiple H1 tags here, each representing something regarding the weather, starting from your city, weather, all the way to the date. All we have to do is to bring all the data that we just fetched here. But prior to doing that, I'm going to add something random here. Let's say Paris, city of Paris. So it's hard-coded. I'm going to save it. And as you can see, Paris is represented here. But what we're exactly looking for is something modifiable, something dynamic. So instead of writing down Paris, I'm going to somehow have access to current city and 
anything representing those values. So let's put current city. I'm going to copy this whole word, current city, inside curly bracket. Put it inside every single span here. And then refer to the specific key. As you can see, it starts with city, weather, temperature, and wind mile. So let's start the first one. City. Next one is weather. The other one is temperature. Remember, temp represented the Celsius temperature. Next one is pressure, humidity, wind, and the last one is date. I'm going to save it. Let's switch back to the local host. Okay, there seems to be some sort of error. Objects are not valid as React child. Check with keys, city, weather, temp, humidity, wind, date. Okay, let's see what happened here. Well, for the city, we have current city for weather. We have current weather for temperature, current city dot temp, pressure, pressure. Humidity, humidity, and oops, so this is the error. The wind should be included inside the curly bracket. Save it. Okay. Let's type a city. I'm going to Toronto. And here we go. Access to the city of Toronto. Weather forecast, temperature, pressure, humidity, wind, and date. Okay, so let's spruce it up a little bit and clean the code. Probably we need to make the font a little bit bolder for temperature and wind. So I'm going to check this out. Temperature should be inside a span. So I'm going to copy this span section for temperature. Copy it there. And put the value inside the span. Save it. Okay, yeah, temperature has changed. Bonds is a little bit bolder. And there's only wind remaining. I'm going to add this span here. Just with the closing tag as well. Okay, it seems consistent to me. Okay, wind should not be included. Save it, and here we go. Everything is consistent. I'm going to go ahead and add another div here, the weather forecast. So, as you can see, this has been added, but let's just make it a little bit more consistent with the previous div section. So, I'm going to add some class names with the margin number six. And the font should be consistent as well. So I'm going to add font bold. Here it is. You remember from the API section that we had access to three keys, one of which was forecast. So I'm going to go ahead and use that forecast information, save it here, 
uh, using a user state and then uh, do a map section and bring all those relevant information for the forecast part. Prior to adding another user state, I would like to have a quick recap of what we have done so far. So the user typed down something here, and then an API call is made to Weather API. So I would like to comment in this console log and see how the data maps. So I'm going to click on search here, open the inspect and go to console. Let's just remove everything and do it again. So this is the data coming from here, from the UI. And we have now access to the main data comprised of three main keys, location, forecast, and current. As you can see, the forecast key includes an array comprised of 10 elements. So eventually, we need to do a map over this array and bring all the relevant data down below the weather forecast. Let's comment out this console and add the new user state. I'm going to call the initial value weather array forecast and set weather array forecast. It's going to be an empty array. We eventually would like to fill this one, weather array forecast, with the information regarding the next 10 days weather forecast. So I'm going to copy the set function and put it under the fetch function. Let's comment out this console log. Use this set function and copy main data dot forecast and forecast day. Now let's console the information in the weather array forecast and see what it brings us. Save it. Rio. Let's go to console. And look at this. We have access to an array comprised of 10 elements. Each element represents the information regarding the upcoming days. Now, all we have to do is to somehow link it with the UI section and what comes after the return. I would like to add another div under the return section. This div is supposed to be a grid. So I'm going to add grid here. I have already copied some Tailwind CSS code. So I'm going to copy them here. Basically, it's supposed to be a three column grid. And there will be a gap of four. And the padding will be two. SM actually refers to any size bigger than the size of a mobile phone. So basically, for your screen, you will have access to a three column grid. I'm going to save it. I'm going to add a map to the information related to the weather forecast. So this information was already saved under the weather array forecast. So I'm going to copy this initial value under the most recent div. I'm going to do a map here. value and index for this map. We're going to have access to a div containing four H4 tags.
just copy all the h4 tags here. Every single h4 tag represents something regarding the future weather forecast. The first one is the day. So let me just day. Another one would be weather and the mean and the max. So copy it here, put it there. Whether mean. So let's save it and see what it brings. Type Rio and look. Have access to ten, ten separate information. All we have to do is to associate those information with the one given here. Warning here indicates that we need to add the key. So let's just add the key here. So the key comes from the index. I'm going to add index to make every single value here unique. Save it. Just get back to this. I'm going to type Los Angeles. Search. Go. Let's add some Tailwind CSS class name here to make it look better. Since I have already copied some Tailwind code, I'm going to paste them here. So the background is going to be orange with a color code 100. The corners are supposed to be rounded. There's going to be some shadow and the padding is 6. Let's save it. Go. Now the color is applied here and there is some shadow along with some padding. Now it's time to grab information one by one. I'm going to start with day, go to the weather, minimum temperature, and finish with maximum temperature. So in order for me to have access to the day, I can definitely use the date epoch here and convert it to a weekday. As you remember, the information regarding the weather forecast was an array including 10 elements and each element represented the information for a certain day. So we should create a function that can somehow convert this value into a certain weekday. At the moment, I have access to date epoch as well as the date. Converting date to a certain weekday would be less of a hassle. So I'm going to go ahead and define a function using date. Okay, let's add a folder here. I'm going to call it utils. Find a new file, converter.js. We need to export this converter. It's going to have access to a particular input date. And let's just define it one by one. First of all, I have copied the weekdays. I'm going to start from Monday all the way to Sunday. Then I'm going to reformat the input date. So we have access to the input date. The format is a string of year, month, and date. The next step is to have access to a number from 0 to 6, which represents the weekdays. So weekday index is actually a number from 0 to 6. All we have to do now is to return the main array representing the certain day we're looking for. So I'm going to return this array weekdays and put the weekday index here. I'm going to save it. Let's switch back to the main code and import this one. So I'm going to import 
the converter and it is automatically imported. So let's just get back to the lower section. Okay. I'm going to have access to that main array, including the information of the forecast. So that was called weather array forecast. Let's copy it. Put it down here. Let's say we want to have access to the first element. First element has got a date. Look at this. This is DRA, the first element, and it's got a date. We know that it's going to bring us a date, but we need to convert it into a certain day. But just let's take a closer look. So we have to this format on all the following wildcard. So let's just convert it to what we are specifically looking for. I'm going to use the converter put everything as an argument. Let's save it. And as you can see, it's been converted to the weekday, Saturday. But actually, this is not what we're looking for. We need to change a few things here. First of all, every single wildcard here should represent a unique day. So we need to change this static data, this zero, into something dynamic. So index would represent a unique day. I'm going to save it. And as you can see, every single wildcard represents a unique day. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, all the way to the next Monday. Secondly, if you take a closer look at the very first value that the forecast brings us, this one, it is representing the current date. So it's actually May 6, and we have May 6 here as well. So in order for us to have a better UX user experience, we need to skip the first one and instead have access to another date. This way, the first card here will not represent the repetitive data which is already displayed above this weather forecast section. So I'm going to go ahead and skip this part. All I have to do is to define a conditional statement. So I'm going to define an if here. If the index is above zero, then return whatever comes next. Let me cut this part. And put it here. Save it. Okay, so look at this. The very first wild card here is Sunday. So it is representing the second value in our array. Second value in this array is Sunday or May 7. So it's working very well. But there is another issue here. You remember that we needed to have access to the next 10 days weather forecast, but here we have only, we are actually skipping the very first value and we end up having only nine wild card here. There is a really good solution. All we have to do is to change this number 10 into 11. So if you go back to the weather API endpoint, all you have to do is to look for the next 11 days weather forecast. If you do so, you will eventually have access to more than 10 elements. So you will have access to 11 values. The first one is skipped and you will end up with 10 wild cards, each representing the uh, next week or the next 10 days uh, weather forecast. Let's give it another shot. I'm going to type down Toronto. Click on search. Yeah, we have access to the next 10 days weather forecast starting from tomorrow, Sunday, all the way to the very last day. Next step is to spruce up the UI section by adding some class names to this area so we can make the font a little bit bolder and add some margins as well. I'm going to go down here, 
define a new span. Everything there. Add the class name. Font is supposed to be bold. And we're going to have a margin with the code number two. I'm going to save it. And we can see that this class has been applied. So the next step is to have access to the data regarding weather, minim minimum temperature, and maximum temperature. So I'm going to go ahead and add some spin as well. With a similar class name. So I'm going to copy the font bold. So the font is bold here. And the margin is number two. Copy the same thing and put it for the other two remaining values. Okay, if you take a closer look at the value we got from that array, we can see that under the day, we have access to another key called condition. It's got a text. And that text represent the general weather condition of each day. So going to follow the same path for the weather, I'm going to have access to the weather forecast. That's actually the main value uh, coming from this part. So let me just write down value. We're dealing with a map, so we need to use this value here. We need to go to the day and condition along with the text. I'm going to save it. Okay. We have access to some data here. All representing the general weather condition for the following week. So they're different. It's working well. Now, let's focus on the minimum temperature. Okay, I'm going to once again have a closer look at the data that we get from that, that array. So, for the minimum temperature, still, we need to focus on the day. We have access to the Celsius and Fahrenheit. So, for example, here, the minimum temperature is 12 point four degrees celsius so i'm gonna go with the exact same path so i'm gonna write value coming from the map day and minimum temperature in celsius i'm gonna do the same thing for for the maximum temperature so i'm gonna put it here instead of minimum temp it will be maximum temp. Everything is in Celsius. I have not applied the toggle yet, so let's have a closer look. Just saved it, and here we go. Okay, we have access to this data. Later on, we're going to actually apply a toggling section through which we can easily toggle between Celsius and Fahrenheit. So for the moment, I'm just going to add the term Celsius, indicating that it's not Fahrenheit. So let me add it here. Celsius, copy it, and paste it for maximum temperature as well. Save it, and here we go. We eventually need to have access to a toggling mechanism through which we can easily convert the imperial units into the metric units and vice versa. Something like this. As you can see, everything is connected. You can easily change the data on the middle section, this part, and the forecast section as well. So I'm going to go ahead and create that. First, I'm going to create a user state and call it imperial. So the 
initial value would be the value regarding the imperial units. Okay, let's define it here. And set imperial. This is going to use a user state. And the initial value is going to be false. Now I'm going to add a checkbox input here. I'm going to go to the UI section. Below the search button, I'm going to paste the code. And explain a bit about what it does. So, first of all, I have to find a label. Inside that label, there is an input with a type checkbox. So, the initial value is the value equivalent to the imperial, which is false, meaning that the toggle is off. And there is going to be a function to be triggered once you are changing that toggle. So, I'm going to go ahead and define this handle checkbox change. So basically, this is going to do the whole toggling mechanism. So it's going to change the value of imperial. I'm going to copy the set function or set imperial. This is going to totally change the, the initial value of imperial. So, for example, if the initial value is false, which is a default, it's going to be turned into true. If it's true, meaning that the toggle is on, then if you click on it, it's going to turn into false. I'm going to save it. Prior to switching to the local host, I would like to once again draw your attention to the code that, uh, that I just pasted. So basically, it was a label. In that label, a, a checkbox type input was defined. The default value was false, or the initial value of imperial was added to the checked part. So once it changes, once you click on that toggle, it's supposed to change the value of imperial. Under that input, there is another class defined with some certain uh, Tailwind CSS code, doing some transitions, changing the color. You will definitely have access to these codes. And as I have defined the relative position as well as inline flags, I expect to have access to another span uh, with the text imperial units. So I'm going to switch back to the local host. And here it is. You can see that there is this toggle and there's this span with the value imperial units. It's working well. I'm going to go with another city. So as displayed here, it can easily toggle, but there is no logical connection between the uh, information presented here in metrics versus the information presented in uh, imperial. So all we have to do is to create this link, create this kind of logical connection, so we can easily switch from one unit into another. First of all, we need to apply this toggling mechanism on the middle section where we have access to the current weather forecast. We need to have access to two units for both temperature and the wind speed. So the default should di uh, display 14 degrees Celsius for temperature and 6.8 uh, kilometers per hour for wind. Actually, we have two options to implement this mechanism. Either you can go ahead and define a function by which you can easily convert the Celsius into Fahrenheit, or you can definitely feel free to use the information coming from the API. In other words, in the second scenario, the people at weatherapi.com have been kind enough to provide that kind of calculation, so we definitely do not need to do the calculation on our own. I'm going to actually go with the, with the latter. 
let's scroll down a little bit go to the middle section so this is the part where we need to do this ternary function I'm gonna put everything side curly brackets Okay, so this is going to be based on that imperial, that toggle value. Basically, I'm going to say if the value of imperial is true, meaning that if it is in Fahrenheit, show this section. Otherwise, you should actually display the temperature in Celsius. So I'm going to add another span. This is dedicated to the Fahrenheit. Current city temp F So once again, if imperial is true, meaning that if we toggle to the uh, imperial unit, you gotta show the current city temperature in Fahrenheit. Otherwise, meaning that if it's false, like its default value, show this section, which is in degrees Celsius. Just add the term Celsius well. I'm gonna add the term Fahrenheit here too. I'm going to save it. Let's switch back to the local host. Okay, great. Here it is. Let me just do the search again. Click on the Imperial unit and look at this. It is easily switching between Imperial and the metric all i'm gonna do is to apply some uh table in css code to make the font a bit bolder now copy the exact Kelvin class name for this span the font is bold and the margin is two save it again toggle I'm gonna add another city New York click on search let's do the same process for the wind and wind mile once again I'm gonna put everything inside a curly bracket so if the imperial is true we need to have access to the wind in mile so i'm gonna copy this span put it here instead of wind i'm gonna use wind f wind mile actually here it is otherwise you gotta be in kilometer per hour. So let me add kh here, kilometers per hour, and mh here as well, mile per hour. I'm gonna save it. Let's switch back to the local host. And here it is. Great. There is only one step remaining. We need to provide this conversion for the following wildcards as well. So I'm going to switch back to the main code and scroll down to the map section. I'm going to define another ternary.
copy the whole span. If it is imperial, it gotta be in Fahrenheit. Otherwise, so let me just write down Fahrenheit as well. Otherwise, it gotta be in Celsius. And the temperature is in Celsius. Let's do the same for the maximum temperature. I'm gonna copy this section. And put everything inside the curly bracket. So if it's going to be in Imperial Fahrenheit, then it got to show the max temperature in Fahrenheit. Otherwise, it should display max temperature in Celsius. Save it. Switch back to the local host. Let's type LA. Everything is in metric unit. I'm going to toggle and look at this. Minimum temperature and maximum temperature for the following wild cards are accordingly changing. And that's it, guys. In the next episode, I'm going to talk about how to persist data. So once you refresh the page, your information will not be lost. And you will still have access to whatever you are searching. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, feel free to hit the like button down below. And if you've got any comment or question, I do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Stay tuned and good luck.